Hi, I'm Pastor Kent, and you've reached the worship service for the faith community of the First United Methodist Church of Normal, Illinois. We're on a journey to Advent, a journey to Bethlehem, to once again kneel and experience the birth of Christ, of God coming into our midst, Emmanuel. Come along with us. Let's journey together. Let's worship. Have you ever noticed how much talk there is about joy this time of year? We hear the word joy in the scriptures we read. We sing about joy over and over again in the Christmas carols. Our, a lot of people have Christmas decorations that have the word joy in them. But what is joy? Do you experience joy? Do you have a, a joy-filled life? And if one wanted to experience joy, what's the pathway to get there from where you are? Well, we're going to talk about that some in our worship service today. We'll be looking at Mary and how it is that she became from a peasant girl uh, facing a real crisis to someone who could sing with joy to God. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we can worship this way together. Let's worship God. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these three candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because God is in the world. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Here is the call to worship. In the Advent seasons, when the past is fled, unasked, away, and there is nothing left to do but wait, God, shelter us. Be our surrounding darkness, be the fertile soil out of which hope springs in due time. In uncertain times, help us to greet the dawn and labor on, love on, in faith, awaiting your purpose hidden you, waiting to be born in due time. We come to worship seeking you. Amen. Join us in singing People Look East. Oh, look at
let's learn more about Simply Christmas with Miss Jill. simply Christmas. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Last week, we talked about the hope that we can have because God kept his promises to send Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but that joy on Christmas Day is, is like nothing else. And today, we are going to talk about joy and the story of Mary. But Mary's story didn't exactly start out with joy. It began with Mary wondering, what in the world is going on? You see, Mary was an ordinary girl from Nazareth. She would have grown up learning the Jewish scriptures. She would have known that God had promised to send a Savior one day. But I don't think she ever imagined how God's plan would involve her. At the time of our story, Mary was engaged to a carpenter named Joseph. They expected to live an ordinary life. But one day, everything changed. Suddenly, Mary found herself at the very center of God's plan for her, for all people, for all time. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. He told Mary that God had a big plan for her life. He said, the Lord has blessed you in a very special way. He is with you. I don't know about you, but if I were Mary, I would have been really scared. And the scripture tells us she was. She was scared and afraid and confused. And Gabriel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. He, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you must call him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of God. That was a lot for Mary to take in. Her answer to the angel was one filled with faith and with courage, even though she was afraid. She said, I, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Then Gabriel left. And Mary realized that God was doing what he had promised a long time ago and chose her to be part of that plan. God had a plan for her life, and that gave Mary joy. And God has a plan for each of us, too, and that's our bottom line, kids, this week. You can have joy because God has a plan for your life. Now, Mary didn't fully understand how everything was going to turn out, and neither do we but she trusted God, and so can we. Have a great day. Bye, kids. Our first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations.
This scripture comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46b through 55. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with his arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May God bless the reading, hearing, and living of these words. Are you full of joy? You know, the Christmas stories are full of joy. If you read the Christmas stories in Matthew and Luke, it seems like just every inch is filled with some kind of message of joy. Joy, joy, joy. Everyone, it seems to be, is announcing good news and sharing joy. Let's just take the Gospel of Luke, for example. Remember the story there? One of the first things we get is Elizabeth, this older woman who is celebrating, full of joy, that God has not forgotten her and that God is going to use her and she is going to conceive and bear her son, John the Baptist, who is going to prepare the way for Jesus. And then you get her husband, Zachariah. As soon as he can speak again, he sings this powerful song about how God has not forgotten the promises made to the people and how God is going to send the Messiah to usher in a new age of righteousness and peace and justice, security. Then if I can jump ahead a little bit in the story, then we get to the manger and Jesus is born. And do you remember the way the angel announces this to these lowly shepherds? I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Then you get the the sky filled with an angelic chorus singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. The shepherds go and they see this baby and they leave full of joy telling everyone what they have experienced as they are praising God. Then on the eighth day, Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple. And who is there? Old Simeon. And Simeon sings with joy and says, now I can die in peace. The Lord has allowed me to see the Messiah who is going to come and, and change everything and fulfill everything we've been waiting for. Your salvation, O oh God, is a light for not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Good news for everyone joy. And the prophet Anna is there and she begins to praise God and to speak about this baby Jesus to everyone who was looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Joy, lots of joy. And we sing about joy this time of year. Think about some of the lines in the the famous Christmas carols, our favorite carols that we sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. O tidings of comfort and joy, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. There's joy everywhere. But many people during this season are not feeling joy. Maybe you're not feeling joy. You may feel heaviness, anxiety, depression, confusion, hopelessness, or maybe you're just feeling boredom or isolation. You may have a feeling that there should be more to life than you're experiencing right now. So how does one get to joy? What's the pathway that leads you to joy? So how does Mary get there? How does Mary go from being this poor peasant girl in a very harsh climate and situation, and someone who's about to be abandoned because she's, she's going to be pregnant out of wedlock, how does she get to the place where she's singing this Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord, 
How does she find joy? What takes her from a world of darkness and corruption and occupation to an attitude of love and hope and peace and joy? Well, the pathway to joy may be a little bit different from what we sometimes expect. You know, a shallow, merry celebration of Christmas can get you to moments of happiness. But to get to a real deep experience of joy, that takes something else. That takes entering into the story of Christmas and going deep, allowing God to speak to you during this season and understanding what Christmas is really finally all about. So let's talk about what really happened in these Christmas stories. You know, in the first century, if you talked about the Son of God, who would you be talking about? Well, almost everywhere in the first century, the Son of God was a title that was held exclusively for Caesar Augustus, for the, the emperor, for the Roman Empire. If you talked about the bringer of light, you were talking about Caesar Augustus. You know, you might call your master, if you're a servant, you might call them Lord, or you might say my Lord. But if you're talking about the Lord, you're probably talking about Caesar Augustus. Who's the light of the world? Caesar, believed to be the son of Apollo. Caesar, the one who brings peace to the world. What we need to understand is that everything in these birth stories in Matthew and Luke, could be considered treasonous. They were, were a direct conflict with the Roman Empire and Caesar Augustus. Almost everything the gospel writers tell us about Jesus in Matthew and Luke are things that are only supposed to be said about the emperor. It's no wonder that Christians were taken out and put in, in arenas to be slaughtered. Competition was not tolerated. By ending the Roman Civil War and conquering most of the known world at that time, militarily, economically, and politically, Rome have, had established the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. This is a peace based on might, largely on military power. It was based on victory and domination. Needless to say, there were many, many people who didn't experience the rewards of, of that victory, they didn't experience peace or security. They suffered under occupation, under heavy taxation, in a world where, where most of the benefits went to the wealthy, to the elites, to the privileged class. And into this world, another vision is offered. Into this world, there's a completely different idea of who is going to be the Savior. A baby born in Bethlehem. The fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of a Messiah born not in a fancy palace, but in a stable. The Son of God brings peace not by military might, not by political victory, but through establishing the kingdom of God, establishing a community of justice and righteousness. As envisioned in Micah 4.4, the vision is the people, everyone, shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. It's a kingdom not of haves and have-nots, not of getting ahead, but a kingdom of righteousness where justice prevails and where everyone has enough. It sounds good to me, but how do you get to this kingdom? Well, part of it is a matter of choosing. You and I, we have a choice. Will we choose the empire? Of course, the empire today is no longer Rome. The Roman Empire has fallen. But pretty much the same values compete for our allegiance today. And you and I have to decide where to give our allegiance. Do you choose might and victory? Do you go with the powerful of this world to get ahead of others and to get your share of the good things in life? Do you choose privilege? Or do you choose to kneel at the manger and then follow this Messiah who grows up and teaches us a different way? Will you receive the Messiah and follow the way that the Messiah offers you? Will you follow not the worldly powers and victors, but God's vision for the end of evil and injustice and violence and imperialism? Do we think that peace on earth really comes from the Caesars? of this world? 
Or do we really trust that peace on this earth comes through Christ, through nonviolent justice? You know, personally, I believe that there are times when evil needs to be restrained by force. But surely we don't believe that violent victory is what brings peace to our world. This kind of force can, can bring a lull in the fighting, maybe, but not real lasting peace. World hem- history demonstrates this, that this kind of victory leads inevitably to, to more violence later on. That it, it just continues to sow seeds of violence. In the face of Christ, the Messiah, we see God's plan for the world. Well, let me talk about something a little different for a minute. Many of you know that our family has a new family member, uh, that we have a new family member in our home. Can can we show a few pictures? Here she is. This is our new family member, Gracie. Here is Gracie hiking, big, tough hiking dog. And here is Gracie in the recliner. Now, Gracie knows she is not supposed to be in the recliner. I explained this very clearly to her, that she is not supposed to be up in the recliner. Here she is sitting in the recliner. It's been a long time since I trained a puppy, so I read a couple of books to get ready, books by uh, Cesar Milan. You know the dog whisperer? He has a show on TV where he goes in and and he rehabilitates dogs is the way he talks about it. People have these trouble. They can't figure out what to do with their dogs, and so they call him, and, and he comes in. And I've been interested because Cesar Milan talks about how all dogs want good leadership. They want to know who they can trust and who they can follow. They need boundaries and they need discipline so they can be balanced, calm dogs with positive, submissive energy. That's what he says, positive, submissive energy. Submissive energy. So who wants to be submissive anyway? But the more I learn about these dog philosophies, the more I think it makes sense for humans too. Each of us, even the most alpha leaders among us, have to decide where to give our allegiance. What will lead and guide us? Who or what will we worship on on earth during our lives? Is Jesus just a cute baby to be kind of sentimental at Christmas time? Or will you receive the Messiah, this Jesus, who has come to transform our world and transform your life? You know, I think Mary came to joy when she decided to submit herself to God, to accept God's vision, and to be part of God's plan for the world. I think this is one of the keys to finding joy. We find the joy of Christmas when we realize the depth of what Christmas is really asking of us. It's not just about tinsel and bows and and holiday cheer. In Christmas, God sends a Messiah to meet all of our hopes and fears. God offers us the way to peace, not through domination, not through violence or victory over others, but through God's community of justice and righteousness, God's kingdom. So the question is, will you submit to God's plan? Will you bow to worship this Messiah and follow? Zachariah's song in Luke 1, in verses 78 and 79 say this, By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give life to those who sit in darkness and in the shadows of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. This Christmas, God again offers you and me a chance to receive the Messiah, to join this Christ revolution, to let our feet be guided to peace. Of course, this means saying no to the emperor. If Jesus is the son of God, then the emperor is not. If Jesus is the savior, the emperor is not. This it requires us to choose because you can't choose both. A decision has to be made. The gospel tells us that we'll only find deep lasting joy when we give our lives and our hearts to following God's way. Joy is found on the path of faith and discipleship. Joy is found on the path of faith and discipleship. So this year, once again, you are invited to follow the star, 
to go to Bethlehem and to see this thing that has come to pass. You're invited to let Christ be born into your life. The good news is that God doesn't give up on you or me. God comes to us again and again. In surprising ways, God enters into our darkness and offers us a path to joy. God will do it again this year for you. As God offers you a path to joy this season, I hope you'll take it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who is always with us in times of joy and sorrow, in times of despair and hope, in times of laughter and tears, we thank you for your presence with us today. As we worship and center our hearts, may our spirits be receptive to your love. Thank you for your never-ending care for all people. Thank you for the tireless work of our health care providers, scientists, and first responders. Thank you for our messengers, wise people sharing public health messages, and postal delivery people bringing letters and cards of goodwill. Oh God, we pray for your love to be made known to all who are struggling these days. For those who are lonely, give them comfort. For those facing illness, give them your healing. For all who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit, we pray for comfort and strength. O oh God, when life is uncertain, remind us to depend upon the certainty of your love that never fails. Through your love, God, you created this world and then sent the gift of love in Christ to bring us light and hope. May that gift continue to help us grow in your love so that our faith grows stronger each day. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time of year and all through the year, God calls us to lives of generosity. It's a, an honor and a privilege to be able to give back to God and to make a difference in the lives of others. Through your giving, you are making a difference in the lives of others. Let's celebrate our offering. Please join us in singing, There's a Song in the Air.
In spite of everything, even in the midst of darkness, Christmas is coming. Christmas will come. What God offers to you this year is a pathway to joy. May God bless you as you're on that journey to find your path, to experience what God wants you to experience during this season. May God bless you and keep you. And may God lead you to find joy. Amen.